Welcome again to Praxis Group International. My name is Mr. Hearn, and I'm here to help you earn a respectable passing score on your TOEFL IBT so you can get done with this crazy test and get on with living a successful life. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the speaking section, about what we can do to overcome speaking anxiety so you can speak naturally, and to understand exactly what ETS graders want from you so that you can earn that score of 26 or higher on your speaking section. All right, before I get started, I just want to let you know this has nothing to do with templates, okay? I don't teach templates. Templates really don't work because the test tells you do not use memorized responses. Using memorized responses will cause you to get a lower score. They tell you that right in the test. So I don't teach templates. What I do teach is exactly what the graders from ETS require of you to get that high score. And how do I know? Well, I've been a uh, TOEFL tutor for uh, since 2007, September of 2007. And for five years, I also had a TOEFL testing center. And I know all there is to know about the test. I'm not just teaching you something that somebody else taught me to teach and I really don't understand it. I'm just teaching it. No, I teach you everything that is required of you exactly as ETS wants it so that you can get a respectable passing score. Now, let's get into some tips that'll help you overcome anxiety so that you can speak naturally. And then I'm going to get into showing you step by step exactly what ETS wants of you to get a high score on your TOEFL speaking section. Let's take a look. Tip number one, and this is the most important thing you can do when taking notes for each question in the speaking section. Take a look at this picture and tell me, how does it make you feel? That's right, using a smiley face. I have found consistently that when my students draw a smiley face on their notes and they look at the smiley face, they get higher scores consistently over those who don't use it. So the number one tip for you to overcome anxiety and to speak well is to draw a smiley face on your notes. I know, sounds silly, sounds crazy, but it really, really works. Let's take a look at something else that's going on with ETS. You need to understand that the speaking section is not about how well you speak. That's right. The TOEFL, uh, the test of English is a foreign language is not a test of English. It is a test of how well you know what is required of you on the test. The graders have very specific things that they're listening for. It's called a rubric. It's structure. They have structure and rules. You may speak English perfectly, but if you don't follow the structure and rules that the graders are listening for, you will not be able to earn that score of 26 or higher. So I'm going to show you exactly what the graders are listening for so that whether your uh, speaking skills are intermediate or at a high level, you'll be able to score 26 or above. All right, let's take a look at how it really, really works so that you'll be prepared and you can get a respectable passing score. Let's take a look. All right, you're looking at the official speaking scoring rubric for integrated tasks. You can see that there's a score of zero, one, two, and three and four. The maximum score is four. All right, now this is not a class to teach you all about the rubric and I don't wanna waste any of your time because I know you've got a lot to do. Just wanna show you that they do have an official rubric. There are rules that the graders are using to determine if your, your responses qualify for a high score or not. One thing that you need to know also that will help relieve anxiety is that many times we think that we're starting with a score of zero and we need to speak really well to earn that higher score, but it's just not true. You see, the reality is that you start with a perfect score. 
and you lose points every time you're missing some element from the rubric. Okay, so what I want you to know is what's expected of you. The other thing you need to know about the graders, what makes this a fair test? You see, if you're going by how you speak in English, eh, that's sort of uh, subjective. And the graders can determine that like, oh, I like this person or I like where they're from by their accent. I'll give them a high school or I don't like this person because I don't like their accent. That would be unfair. The only way to make this test fair is to have very specific rules so that you're either following them or you're not. Now, let's think about the graders for a moment. You do have an AI grader, and that one aside, let's talk about the human graders. It's the human graders that really count right now. Consider that these human graders, they're really people. They are people that have jobs. They're high school English teachers or university English professors who need a little bit of more money right now. And so they've signed up for TOEFL and they have been trained to score your responses and they have an account on ETS. And when they sign into their account, they will say how many responses they want to score this week. Say it's maybe 25 or 50 and ETS will send them a bank of responses. And they don't have names or anything. They just have numbers, right? So they sign into their account. They click on a number and it plays the response. And while that response is playing, they're making a check on a list. And let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this. All right, so this isn't exactly what they see when they look at their screen, but it gives you a great idea of what's going on with the grader while they're listening to your response. You see, they have a screen that has a list of questions and each of those questions, they have to answer yes or no. So number one, did you speak in English only? And all they do is click yes or no. Number two, did you speak clearly? Yes or no. Number three, did you answer the question completely? Yes or no. Number four, you use proper structure, yes or no. Number five, you had no long pauses, yes or no. Number six, you had no extra words like uh or um, yes or no. Number seven, you gave accurate examples and details, yes or no. Number eight, you used transition words and phrases, yes or no. Number nine, you used proper English grammar, yes or no. And number 10, you used complex sentences, Yes or no. And now, here's what they do. They click submit. They don't actually give you the score. All they do is click yes or no. You had these elements or you didn't. And then they click submit. And the program gives you your score. By the way, for question one, you must give relevant reasons, examples, and details. And for questions two, three, and four, Examples and details must be stated in the order they appeared in the listening part. All right, so that's really what's going on with the graders. So that means that while you're speaking, when you're structuring your response, you want to structure your response in the way that the graders are listening so that they can easily check yes off on each box and then you automatically get a higher score. And this is why many of my students who have, have intermediate, low intermediate, or even high intermediate English skills can score 26 or above, even if you really don't understand what you're talking about, structuring your response, the way the graders are listening, gives you that respectable passing score. Let's take a closer look at one of the speaking questions so that you will know exactly what's expected of you to respond correctly. That is the way the ETS graders require you to respond so that you can get a high score and be done with this crazy test. Let's take a look. Before I show you exactly step-by-step step how the graders want you to answer question number one to get that perfect score, Allow me to tell you a little bit about my online TOEFL video course. Free yourself from the TOEFL IBT in 30 days. Within this course, you will have unlimited access to lessons for all four sections of the TOEFL. 
It also includes membership to our TOEFL community. You will have continuous personalized support to answer all of your questions. I have a live TOEFL Q&A group session via Zoom, and I offer 50% scholarship for members who want to have Zoom classes. And these are one-on-one -on -one personalized Zoom classes to help you to get the highest score possible. And all of this for only $79 a month. Here we are at the TOEFL IBT speaking section. Question type number one, choose an option. The first question of the TOEFL speaking section is designed to determine how well you can draw on your own experiences, opinions, and ideas to give a concise response that is relevant to the question. Although it is advisable that you do not speak in a predetermined format, template, having the structure that ETS requires you to follow helps you to respond with more accuracy and confidence and makes your response easier for graders to give you a higher score. There is a structure that graders are listening for that, when used, will help you to achieve a higher score. Follow the basic structure described in this tutorial for a higher speaking score. You can find the official ETS speaking rubric at the address in the middle of this page. For the simplified rubric, see my video TOEFL course. Question type one, choose an option. The first type of task on the TOEFL IBT speaking section will either give you two options to choose from or will ask you whether you agree or disagree with a certain statement. You will have 15 seconds to prepare and 45 seconds to respond to this question type. Example of question number one, type one. Some people believe that university students should be required to attend classes. Others believe that going to classes should be optional for students. Which point of view do you agree with? Use specific reasons and details to explain your answer. You have 15 seconds to prepare your response. Begin preparing after the beep. Beep. The challenge. One of the most difficult tasks is to think of a proper response in only 15 seconds. The only way to make this easier is to practice, practice, and practice. Be sure to take notes of your preference, reasons, and details and examples. Write down only your key words to each part of your response. Would you like more than 15 seconds to prepare? To get more time to prepare, as soon as you fully understand the question, begin taking notes. All right, there are a couple of things here that we need to address. Number one, this question is different than all of the others because in the other questions, they give you the information they want you to relate. This one, you have to have your own ideas and that gives a lot of anxiety. So how do we overcome that? Use the smiley face. We'll talk more about that in a moment, right? Also, being prepared, knowing exactly what's expected of you and knowing how to respond in a way that the graders will give you that high score helps relieve a lot of anxiety. So I'm going to show you exactly what ETS's graders want from you so that you can give it to them with ease. And the other thing is this 15 seconds pressure. Do you know that ETS builds anxiety and confusion into the test to try to get you to fail? I know it's horrible. However, the test has very specific rules and structures and that does help make it a lot more fair because when you know what's expected of you, you can give them what they want and they give you what you want, that respectable passing score. So what we're gonna do to get more than 15 seconds, now believe me, we're not gonna cheat. You cannot cheat on the TOEFL IBT. A little segue here, but hear me out. There's no cheating on the TOEFL IBT. In fact, there are so many safety features built into this test. I can't tell you. I studied the test continuously, and I know exactly what they do in this test to beat you. They build a lot of things into this test 
to determine if you're cheating or not. You cannot cheat on the TOEFL IBT, but you can beat the TOEFL IBT by using their rules and their structures to answer the questions. That's what it's all about. So how are we going to get more than 15 seconds without cheating? All you have to do is be familiar with the question type. You see, when you know how the questions are going to be structured, you know question number one is coming up. It's either gonna ask you to choose between two options or say whether you agree or disagree with a certain statement. When you can read the question, ignore ignore the, the narrator, it, just ignore them. Look at the screen, see the question. And I teach you exactly how to do this in my online video course, by the way. Look at the question. Once you understand the question, start taking notes. This gives you an additional 25 to 30 seconds to take notes. That's 25 to 30 seconds beyond the 15. So that means you could have 35 to 45 seconds to take notes. Now, there are some dangers to doing that because when they give you the first beep, you might start talking. And then the second beep comes 15 seconds later and you go, um, and you just lost your points. OK, so make sure that when you're following what I teach you, that you practice it. OK, in my online course, I go through all of this and, and I'm here to help you continuously. OK, I am always here to help you. So make sure that you reach out to me and ask me questions. Now, get your extra time. Take your notes. Let's take a look at how we're going to take notes, because this is important. Remember, not templates structure. The graders are listening for structure. And if they hear the use of a template, they will give you a lower score. So let's see how do we answer the question the way ETS graders really want you to. Let's take a look. Taking notes. You may be wondering why you should take notes for this question. Taking notes gives you the confidence to know what you're talking about, to speak clearly it keeps your response directed to the topic and it helps it to flow well. All of these are elements of a high scoring response. Here's an example of notes for the sample question one, type one. What's the first thing we see at the top of this page? The smiley face. Again, I cannot overstate the importance of drawing a smiley face at the top of your notes. It does two main things. Number one, it helps relieve anxiety. Number two, it helps you stay focused on your notes. You see, most of the time people start talking and then blah, 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 and they forget what they were talking about. That's why you have to take notes so that you keep your eyes on your notes and it keeps your response going smoothly and sticking to the point. The other thing is that when you're looking at your smiley face, it's like talking to a friend. Say if a friend asks you a question, they're like, hey, um, which do you think is better, this choice or this choice? And you just look at them and you give them the answer. Well, you're going to be giving your answer to your smiley face, your friend. Something that you don't wanna do is to look at your notes and then think you know what you're gonna say and then look at the screen and try to respond. What happens when you do this is you start your response. In my opinion, I believe it's, um, when you look up at the screen, your brain just goes Oof, right into the screen. Believe me, there is nothing on that screen that's gonna help you to give a high scoring response. Everything you need to know is written down on that piece of paper. Everything you need to keep you confident and giving a proper response so the graders can give you a high score is on that paper. So keep your eyes on that paper and talk to your smiley face and you'll do great. Now let's go in and see how do we write these notes? Remember, it's not a template. These are required structures required by ETS. I'm not teaching you anything that I think you should do, nothing that somebody told me you should do. These are things that I know exactly, right? I know what ETS requires of you. 
And that's why I'm helping you. And if you do this, you will get a respectable passing score. Let's take a look. Let's take a little review of our question. And it states, some people believe that university students should be required to attend classes. Others believe that going to classes should be optional for students. Which point of view do you agree with? Use specific reasons and details to explain your answer. And now, how are you going to write your notes? At the top, I've given my choice. And then I have R1, D1, R2, D2. R1 is reason one, D1 is detail one. R2, of course, is reason two, and D2 is detail two. Now you'll see that my choice is to attend classes. And my first reason, I don't have a full sentence. Remember, we're only writing enough so that we can remember what we were thinking when we were taking notes. The first reason I have is that info in the class are not in the book. And the related detail is that you can miss questions on a test. Reason two is a surprise quiz in the class. And the detail, the related detail, is you get a zero if not there. Note, your response will be five sentences joined by connecting words and phrases. Helpful tip. Draw a smiley face at the top of your notes and talk to the smiley face. This may sound ridiculous, but it really helps to relieve anxiety. Notice that I didn't write full sentences. All you want to do is write enough words to trigger your memory as to what you were thinking when you were writing. And notice that I just have five things that I have here. I have my choice that I make, I have my first reason and the supporting detail, and then I have the second reason and the supporting detail. Our response is going to be five sentences, and this is why. The graders are listening for a certain structure. They've asked you a question. Your first sentence is going to answer that question. You're either going to say which choice you're making or to say whether you agree or disagree with the statement they've given you. And then you have to give the first reason to support which choice you've made or why you agree or disagree with the statement. You have to follow that reason with an example and a detail, supporting information. And then you're going to give your second reason followed by supporting information. And when you're done with your notes, saying those five sentences, Close your lips, okay? Trust me, this is exactly what you're going to do. Do not give conclusions. Don't, just don't. If you've spoken for 35 seconds or 40 seconds and you still have time left over, stop. Close your lips. Because I guarantee you that the next thing out of your mouth is, um... And if you say uh or um during your conversation, your response, you get a lower score. Okay? This is all about controlling your ability to respond in the way the graders want. So you're going to keep the structure in the way they're listening for, because that's part of your response. Are you structuring your response the way they want you to? That's a yes or a no. So I'm giving you the response in the structure that they want. Now, let's take a look at how that those notes translate into a proper response, a proper high scoring response for the graders. Let's take a look. Using my notes, I simply make sentences of what my notes were. And I say, in my opinion, I believe students should be required to attend classes. One reason I believe it is better to attend classes is that professors often speak about information that is not in the textbooks, and there might be an exam that has questions about information that the professor spoke of only in class. Furthermore, a professor may give a surprise quiz, and if a student isn't in class, they will not get credit for that quiz, and this could lower the student's overall grade for that class. This response answers the question directly in the first sentence and is followed by 
related reasons, and supporting details. It uses proper connection words and phrases to connect ideas, has different sentence structures, and it facilitates the use of proper grammar and vocabulary. When spoken correctly, this response should be 30 to 45 seconds in length. Now, if your English skills are at a high level, this should be a pretty easy response for you to make. If your English skills are at the beginning or intermediate level, it's going to be a little more challenging, but to make it easier, you're going to answer it one sentence at a time, looking at your notes. That's why we break it into those five pieces. You're going to look at your first note that says, what's your choice, and just make that sentence. And then think about the, the purpose and the structure of your second sentence. What's the purpose? You're giving your reason. So you're going to state what your reason is and then follow that reason with the next purpose, and that is to give supporting information. Then you're going to say something like furthermore or also, and then you're going to give your second reason followed by the supporting information. Don't worry about getting it wrong. You see, if you're worried about getting things wrong, you're going to make mistakes. When you concentrate on getting things right, you get it right and you get that high score. Knowing exactly what's expected of you and knowing how to do things the way the graders want really helps with your confidence and automatically boosts your score, right? That's what I'm here for, is to help you through this crazy test so that you can pass it and get on with your life and be successful. That's what makes this a great country. You come here, you have a great idea, you have great abilities, and you put those abilities to work. Unfortunately, the stupid TOEFL gets in the way. So that's why I'm here to help you get through this TOEFL, get on with your life. All right. Oh, by the way, just so you know, my wife is from South America. And all of my family also came from another country. So I know exactly how hard it is to get started here in the United States. And I know the land of the free is not free. And this TOEFL IBT can be really draining on your emotions and on your pocketbook. So I'm doing everything I can to help you get through this as quickly as possible. And if you need any help, just let me know, right? I'm always here for you. All right, let's get back in and finish up seeing exactly how to answer this question to get a respectable passing score. Now, if your English skills are intermediate, you may give a response like this one. Students should be required to attend classes. It is better to attend classes. Students can hear the questions asked other students. And these questions help another student understand better the subject. Another reason is better is that professors speak about information not in the textbooks. And exams have questions about information the professor only speak of in class. Finally, the professor give a surprise quiz and you will not get credit for that quiz. When spoken correctly, this response should be 30 to 45 seconds in length. Where the first response would definitely score a four, this response would likely score a 3 to a 3.5. What's the difference? The difference really is between passing and taking the test again. If you're scoring a 3, you're going to take the test again. If you're scoring a 3.5 or a 4, you're going to pass your score with a respectable passing score and move on with your life. There are things about these responses that hit all of the information that the graders are looking for. If you want to know more about this in greater detail, please go to my video course and see the videos for the speaking section. It goes step by step and explains everything about the responses, why you should respond in a certain way, and how that response, every little bit, gets you to that higher score. All right, let me just Finish this up so that you can start practicing so that you can get a high score on this question type. Things to avoid. 
there are many very good, well-intentioned TOEFL IBT tutors who simply don't know what ETS requires of you to earn a high speaking score, and so are teaching things that are counterproductive. If you've been struggling with trying to score over 22 on your speaking section, here's a list of common things that you should avoid. Number one, never purchase vocabulary lists or use perfect vocabulary words in your responses. Number two, never use templates. ETS will give you a lower score if you use a memorized template. Number three, never give a conclusion statement. Just don't. Number four, vague responses receive lower scores. For more detailed instructions and examples of how to take notes for each question type and to learn exactly how ETS wants you to respond to each speaking question to earn a perfect score, please join me and my students at this address. That's it for this lesson. I hope that you take what I've taught you and you practice it so that you can get that respectable passing score on your speaking question number one. If you'd like to see more on how to pass the TOEFL IBT in the way that ETS requires you to, come and see me at the address that's in the link below. Just go ahead and click on it. Get in there, come and see me so I can personally help you pass your TOEFL IBT with the highest score possible, a respectable passing score. I look forward to seeing you there.